Hello, hello guys, how are we doing? We've got Modern Warfare 2's sort of first video um, and I thought what a better way to start off and show you what settings I've been using um, when I jump into multiplayer this weekend. So I'm on PC at the moment, um, so these are going to be PC settings um, and before we get into it in depth, I'm using an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller um, so a lot of the settings might be different for you guys because I've got this and a lot of it's customizable elsewhere. If you do want me to do a separate Series X settings like in-depth settings uh, like a controller setup let me know um and i can sort something out but for now this is just going to be the settings within the actual game itself so let's crack on with that so in a bit of a different place and luckily we've got some quick settings here so i don't play on keyboard and mouse so i'm not going to be doing that at all um so we are going to be using a controller obviously Button layout, tactical, just so that when you're crouching, you're using the right stick. But again, this is completely personal prefer preference. Prefer preference? Personal preference. Um, I like tactical. It's what I've always played on. It means B is melee. Um, but I've actually got two paddles on my Elite controller. So um, one's jump, one's melee. So I use the right stick to crouch, right paddle to jump, and the left paddle to melee. So that's my button layout. But everything else is pretty standard when it comes to that. Um, don't play on flipped. Don't play on... The regular button layout. I like vibration, but again, completely personal choice. It throws a lot of people off with their aim, but I like it because I don't know. It, I feel more in the game. I know when I'm being shocked because my controller vibrates, and it just makes me feel a little bit more in tune um, than I would than I would be without having it on. To be fair, uh, playing eight eight cents. This is what feels right to me. Again, completely personal preference. If you're not sure, if you want to heighten it, make, make it higher. In, do it incrementally. Um, most people tend to play around the five sixth mark, um, including pros. So don't worry if you don't want to play on eight eight. I just prefer to play on a little bit of a higher one. And then to compensate for my shoddy aim when I'm on eight eight, I actually have an ADS sensitivity multiplayer of point eight, which means that when I'm aimed down, I'm actually on a whatever point eight times eight is. Um, so yeah, if I was on a point five, my ADS sense would be a four because that's half of this. But I play on a I don't know what it'd be on this. I, quick mouse isn't my thing. Um, and then for this, I don't have anything. This is just a standard. Vertical aim assist, standard. Aim axis, sorry. Aim on sight behavior, all off. Automatic sprint, I have off. Now, if you don't want to mash your controller up too much, you can always have automatic tack spring, but I would always recommend not doing that because you're going to get caught sprinting 90% of the time. If you feel like you're dying and you're just not being able to pull up your gun quick enough, it's probably because you've got automatic tack sprint on. Um, so I either like to have automatic sprint on, so it's like sort of a middle ground, but for me, I like to have full control over what my character's doing. I don't want to get caught out like slowly moving forward and it automatically sprints me and then I'm too slow to ADS because as you guys know, it takes you longer to ADS or like shoot after sprinting. Um, automatic sprint compared to walking and then tactical sprinting takes even longer. So I have it off just because I'm in full control of my character and I know I can time when I want to do it and when I don't want to do it. But for most people... I'd recommend also have a spring just because it's easier and saves button bashing your controller to pieces. Um, equipment behavior on hold, ADS plus melee to mount. I prioritize interact because um, basically that what this means is that when you've got the option to reload and pick up a gun, tapping it quickly, tapping X quickly or square if you're on P uh, PlayStation controller will mean that you pick up the gun rather than reload. Now for me, this is more important than reloading because say you're in a you're in a mid gun fight, you got to re like you've got a gun on the floor. And you need to you run out of ammo. I'd much rather just pick up another gun and you're good to go rather than take three seconds to reload. Um, it just means I can be in the action quicker. And I can always reload afterwards if needs to be, but I prefer this. It works for me. But again, it's completely personal preference. Um, arm play behavior, not really applicable. Going into advanced, obviously, I'm aim assist on. I haven't actually tried any other aim assist type. Uh, I wouldn't do precisional focus, and I think they're mainly targeted towards snipers. Um, but default or Black Ops, I would suggest, and I haven't really tried Black Ops yet, to be honest, so I'm not really sure how that is, but yeah. Uh, standard aim response curve. People like to have this on dynamic, but as I say, I've got custom settings on my Elite Series 2 controller, so if it, I basically have this in my controller so that whenever I'm on any other game, I have the same aim response curve type, so I'm not having to switch between games. Um, everything else is pretty standard, I think. Dead zones. With the dead zones, the simple rule of this is you want the left stick and the right stick to be as low as possible without getting stick drift. Now, you know if you're getting stick drift when you put the controller... This is worth doing in a private match. When you put your controller down and 
you're still moving. So, for example, if I put the controller down, I was still like my aim was like slowly looking to the left. I know that I'd have to increase my right stick minimum dead zone. Um, you want it as low as possible, just so that when you put your input into the controller, um, it reacts as quickly as you do. That's essential. It is, uh, but you don't want it to be too low so that you get a stick drift because then your aim will, might be off. Um, everything else here is standard, I believe. You want grounded mantle off just because, say, for example, you're behind a car and you're jump shotting as you're shooting in the car. You don't want to be mantling because that will just make you lose the gunfight. You'd much rather just be jumping up and down. Um, yeah, you, 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 as, as I say, you're going to be more in control. You can still mantle while on the ground, but it just means you have to double tap it. That's essentially what it means. Um, which I prefer, again, more control over the character means there's less to blame on the game, <laughs> which is the main thing. Uh, I like to have this on partial for a similar situation. Everything else I think is pretty standard. Yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Now, moving on to the graphics. Now, this is, um, again, completely dependent on what your PC can, can deal with. Ideally... This is set up for maximum frames. It's a competitive game. It's a fast time to kill. I feel like the better frames you have, the more chance you are of winning gunfights. Especially when ranked play eventually comes out, you're going to be wanting to win every gunfight possible and you don't want to be blaming frames as a result of like for you losing the gunfight. So ideally, you want the uh, Modern Warfare 2 like VRAM usage to be as low as possible just so that you have more room to use frames. Obviously, it depends what monitor you've got, but I'm running on a 244Hz monitor. Uh, as you can see, I've got an RTX 3070 Ti, um, so I'm 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 okay. Like it's, I think it's like mid high tier sort of equipment, um, but these are the settings I have got on this VRAM and VSync off and off. Custom frame rate limit I have to 245 in game because that's what my monitor can deal with. Um, the menu custom frame rate is at 120. Blah, blah, blah. The menu and out of focus custom frame rate doesn't really matter too much. Um, -da 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 -da. Don't want that. Um, where are we? That's standard. Brightness, I pretty much have on just 50. Um, focus mode, I have off. High dynamic range, I also have off. You can have this on if you want. It's completely up to you. Um, but I don't feel like it's necessary at all. I don't think you need it on. It's up to you. It's a completely personal preference. But for me, I want I to prioritize frames over how the game actually looks. And as you can see, it actually doesn't look bad even without this off. So I'm not too fussed. And then you want the NVIDIA DLSS if you can have it. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, put this on. Um, this is what my settings are anyway. Uh, you want this set to custom. You can have you can have standard what you want. You can have like the, the set defaults or whatever. But I prefer to have it on custom just so that I can control every single aspect uh, of what I want. I've left this as standard. If I'm entirely honest, I'm not entirely sure what it does. So I've left it as is, and everything else you can see is on low, low, low. Uh, this is on short, low, very low. Just so I don't, this bullet impact rates I actually have on just because I like to see um, where I've wall banged things before and where it works. So for example, if I'm wall banging a door and it's not hitting, I want to know where I've already previously wall banged it so I can make sure it does hit next time. Um, I have then the shader quality medium. Um, I didn't want it to look too bad, so I've put it on medium. You can have it on low as well if you don't feel like you're getting enough frames. Tessellation near, terrain memory minimum, on-demand texture streaming off. Now, this is a huge one to have off because if you feel like you're getting high latency or you're getting packet bursts or anything like that, it might be due to this. So if you feel like that's the thing you're dealing with, turn that off uh, and you should be gravy. Everything else is low. Water caustics is off. Um, again, Say for example, you can see me when I. If you realistically, you want this white bar to be as low as possible. If you're going for frames, now if you don't really care about frames uh, and you're looking for quality, obviously you change it up a bit. But it is completely dependent on what piece, what your PC can handle. But for me, this is what I prefer. I've tested it on bots, and as you can see, the gameplay looked absolutely fine. Everything normal off. Uh, particle lighting I have on normal. I don't want it too bad. Uh, I have this on both. Wet the grid low, da, 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 da. low latency mode on, uh, depth of field, and this is the, the big key things. Uh, you want film grain zero, weapon motion blur off, world motion blur off, and depth of field off. This isn't a campaign, this is multiplayer. You want to be able to see everything as clearly as possible wherever you are. Uh, 
I, just I don't I didn't think it changed anything. <laughs> and then on view, you want I've got 104 field of view. Um, personal preference. I, if you're not sure, say this is your first. Um, say this is your first COD with an FOV slider. Put it on 100. That's what most people play on. And then if you feel like it's too much or too low, you can adjust it from there. Um, I feel like 104 is decent enough for me to be able to see people and be able to see around me as well at the same time. I have it on affected. Um, essentially what this means is that when you ADS, does it take into account you've updated it FOV? Yes, it does because I've put it on affected. If not, it will all the, where you're aiming will be further. Say, for example, I had this on 100 and FOV, FOV and this was independent. When I ADS, it would look closer. So the it's almost like a extra zoom, I would say. Um, but yeah, weapon field of view wide. Uh, I want less of the gun covering the screen, so you can see the difference here. The gun is smaller when you have it on wide, um, which means that you can see more around it. Which is just the more you can see, the better. I haven't changed the third person. Uh, the camera movement and the third person camera movement. I've just put to least. You don't want the shake. You want to be able to have a stable sort of game, uh, and it reduces sort of motion sickness as well, which I think helps. Um, and this one here is huge. When you're on S&D in the beta, the only way you can spectate your teammates is to have a like a head cam, which was absolutely painful. I did not like that whatsoever. So you can change that to game perspective, which means that it's just a standard old um, spectating sort of thing. So yeah, that's what I have. And then when you come to audio, headphone bass boost, I have the music relatively low simply because I... When I'm clutching up an S&D, the last thing I want is to hear drums in the background or something as it's getting tense. I don't care for the tense music. Um, I'd rather hear the enemies than listen to music. That's what it comes down to. Um, everything else is pretty default. Um, I've put to push to talk, so I don't want them to hear me every single time. If I'm talking to someone in Discord or whatever, I don't want them to hear me. And yeah, I think everything else is good. If you want this FPS and latency Thing at the top um oh, actually no actually this is a this is a big one so they've since the beta they've added player names you can have the icon only you can have it just as the player name or you can have the full name including the clan tag now for me i don't want to be losing gunfights due to poor visibility i want to see enemies at any given chance therefore i want to be able to see their full name so that when when i see them i see them uh this can be a little bit hard to see sometimes if you're in a busy environment Whereas this is obvious that it's going to be an enemy. So I have it on full name, um, which means that enemies are easier to see, which we all want, really, at the end of the day. Uh, to get the FPS and latency here, you just click on show telemetry and you turn the FPS counter and server latency on. That means you can see what ping and FPS you're getting at all times. Um, and then everything else, I think, is standard. So yeah. That's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you found it useful. Again, I say if you want the Xbox Series X specific settings um, for my controller, that is a Series 2 Elite settings, let me know in the comments and I'll make a quick video on that as well. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.